Hey everybody, this is George Sable with Nat20 Gaming. A buddy of mine, Chris Hoffman, asked me to do a tutorial on color theory for his channel, um, and I was really flattered, so thanks for the opportunity. I've been an art teacher for the past nine years, and I've taught everything from kindergarten all the way to high school, and we're actually here today in my art trailer, so welcome. So let's jump right into it. What you are looking at are the three primary colors. These are the colors that all other colors are derived from. And when I paint my own figs, I use these three plus black and white. Unless I'm working with metallics, and then I'll incorporate those too. But really, those five are, will take you a long way. So, if we're talking color theory, let's look at the color wheel. I know I say wheel, we're staring at a triangle, so let's round it out. Let's make it roll. All right, so to go from our three primary colors to our color wheel, we need the three secondary colors. You get your secondary by mixing your primary together. So uh, let's go back to our Sesame Street days. Oh, there are three mm, primary colors, right? But let's mix them together. Let's make our secondaries. So first we're gonna start out with red and yellow. And kids, what does red and yellow make? Yeah, that's good, red and yellow makes orange. Now, when you're mixing paint, you'll notice that different colors have, uh, for lack of a better term, different power levels, right? Yellow is, is kind of at the bottom of our power scale. It's pretty squishy. Um, whereas red is near the top of our power level scale. You could say um, it is in fact over 9,000. Um, so when we mix colors, you wanna always start with a lower power level color and add the higher power level color to it. Because as you can see, just a little bit of red will really impact that yellow that I've got down there. And I mean, if you saw how much yellow I put down versus how much red, you can really see how strong of a color um, red is. By the way, on a side note, um, if you ever decide to paint a room in your house yellow, change your mind. Um, yellow is really frustrating to paint with because it takes a lot of it to do anything. Speaking of yellow, let's go back to our friend yellow here. We're gonna grab another scoop of it. Put it right down here. And we're gonna mix it with blue to create my favorite color, green. Whoa. Just a little no moon string. Um, and again, I've started out with a pile of yellow. I'm going to take a booger of blue, because that's the uh, types of measurement we use here in the art trailer. Um, you know, the booger, the smidge, and the dollop. All extremely scientific and accurate. Blue is, on that power scale, it's pretty strong. It's not quite red. It's not quite over 9,000. But, uh, you know, it can still go Super Saiyan on a good day. Um, but as a result, I need a little more of it, a little more of it to affect the yellow. There we go. Nice. There we go. We've got a nice little green there. And then finally, red and blue together make purple. And we're gonna put purple here. Start with the lower powered color. Probably just a little more of that. Mix the higher powered one into it. Just a little bit. We wanna change it, not beat it to death. There we go. We're gonna make a nice purple. Excellent. Still a little too blue. Still a little too blue. Blue's putting up a fight today. Good. Good for you, blue. All right. Let's chuck a little more red in there. Oh, I think I overkilled it. A 
little too much red, so we're going to add just a little more blue. There we go. That's better. And we have a lovely poiple. Excellent. Red, orange, yellow, green, blue, purple, we have our color wheel. Now we can start talking about color relationships. The first relationship I want to point out is warm versus cool. If we take our color wheel and we split it this way, we've got red, orange, yellow on one side, we've got green, blue, purple on the other. Red, orange, yellow, these are what are known as our warm colors. It's no coincidence that you would use these to make fire. Fire is warm, colors are warm. It works. These are cool colors. What does this mean to us? Well, think about it. When we paint, um, especially, especially if we're painting flesh tone, we want our flesh to look alive. We want it to look alive. Um, and living things tend to have a warmth about them. Um, especially people. So when you're mixing your flesh tones, you, you definitely want to keep it warm. Um, if your flesh tones end up looking too cool, it looks like you've got walking corpses. Not a bad thing if you're painting zombies. A lot of cool colors go into painting zombies. Um, but if you're going for lifelike, if you're going for living, uh, definitely think warm colors. And that that's any, any ethnicity, any race. Um, you want to go with warm. I mean, even if you think about like your your drow elves, uh, yeah, they're they're blue, but it's a warm blue. Yes, you can have warm versions of cool colors and cool versions of warm colors, but kitties, that's a story for another day. Um, so that's one relationship, warm versus cool. Let's talk about another one. Two, in fact, the first one we're going to talk about are analogous color schemes. These are colors that blend well with each other, um, that work together to create a subtle, low contrast look. Um, these are colors that are next to each other on the color wheel. So our warm colors, red, orange, yellow, next to each other, green, blue, purple, next to each other, warm and cool. Um, but what are some other examples? What are some other examples? The easiest one I like to point out, look out your window, look at your front lawn. If you're looking at your grass, your grass is probably a combination of yellow, green, and blue, right? Now, depending on the time of day, you may see some purples in there, but primarily you're looking at yellow, green, and blue, and you're going to get everything in between here, just, just entire ranges. But yellow, green, and blue work well together. And it's not some sort of, you know, random magical happenstance. It's because they're analogous. It's because, um, you know, as I like to, to say to my elementary students, they sit next to each other at the lunch table. So they get along real well. Um, when we're painting, when we're painting our figs, you know, let's say I've got a, uh, a blue demon, right? It's not just going to be a giant smurf. Yes, I am going to use blue. But, you know what's going to look really well with that? Is if some of the areas I hit with a purple. Right? And then other areas I hit with a red. Just grab just a little bit. Right? Red, purple, blue. This is an analogous color scheme. Works really well together. Blends together really nice. Let's actually take some water. Hope it's not too dirty. And we can kind of blend these edges. And then rinse off and blend these edges together. But you can kind of see how one flows into the other. Okay. This creates a subtle, low-contrast look. Contrast just means the difference between color. The greater the difference, the higher the contrast. Um, 
that brings me to complementary color schemes. We talked about analogous. These are low contrast color schemes. Complementary are high contrast color schemes. Now, how do you get complementary colors? Well, these are the kids that don't get along with each other at the at the lunch table. Um, but man, when you put them together, they do they do create an impact. Um, Complementary colors are opposite one another on the color wheel. But how do you know what are opposite? Well, they're across from each other, right? Red is the opposite of green. Blue is the opposite of orange. And yellow is the opposite of purple. You can use these to make a striking visual impact. And you can actually use complementary colors to enhance one another. Um, one of the best examples of this, go to the grocery store. Yeah, no, pause the video, go there now. Oh, wait, 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 wait for instructions. Um, once you get to the store, check out the apples, all right? Look to see that the, the red apples are probably right next to the green ones. They do this on purpose. It's not an alphabetical order. It's a visual thing. Um, by putting the red apples next to the green apples, it actually makes the red apples look redder than they are. It makes the green apples look greener than they are. That's why when you're in that store, you see that red apple, you're like, oh God, that looks delicious. And you just want to bite into it. And so you buy it. But then you get it home and set it on your counter. It doesn't look nearly as appetizing because it's not next to something green. So it doesn't look nearly as red. It doesn't look nearly as shiny. It doesn't look nearly as glorious. So think about um, how you pair these. Let me show you that. I'm going to take this red. And I'm going to put it right here next to my orange. All right. That's analogous. Now, take a little more. I'm going to put it down here next to my green. And if you look, let's just cover that up for a second. Look right down here. That red looks a lot more red than that red up there. It's the same paint. It's coming from the same pile. The only difference is what color it's next to. By putting the red next to the green and using those complementary colors, you're enhancing each one. Um, gets a little murky if you mix them together. We can talk about that later when we talk about color mixing and desaturation. Um, but just when you use them together, when you place them next to one another, know that you're going to create uh, some really visually striking figures. Now. How is this useful? How is this useful in terms of painting miniatures? Um, I like to think of these, these little tricks when I'm painting uh, armies for tabletop war games. I love tabletop war games. I am terrible at them. Um, so I need all the help that I can get. And one of the ways I like to help myself is thinking about the color schemes of the army. Let's say I've got some really, really disposable units um, that I want to, I, I, I'm okay with charging them into battle. Um, I don't mind if they're targeted uh, meat shields, for lack of a better word. Let's say I've got some meat shields. Well, maybe my meat shields, I'll paint up, um, I'll paint their skin tone uh, like a reddish orange. So I'm just going to go ahead and take this and kind of mix it together. You know, let's say uh, let's say they're they're a race of uh, warrior chicken people, because that sounds awesome, right? So I've got my warrior chicken people. They're gonna be red. They're gonna be orange. I'm gonna mix a little yellow in there, right? Let's kind of blend all that up together. Make it nice and bright. You really want it to stand out. You want your opponent to notice this. This is, these are the, the hey, look at me troops, right? And so then, what if I took those, those super orange warrior chickens 
and I did them up like, uh, I don't know, like friggin' Braveheart troops and gave them blue war paint. Bam, bam. All right, I'm gonna put the blue down in there, especially get it like right down in that orange. Get it nice and thick, right on top. Creating some really, really, really visual striking uh, contrasts. These are the guys that scream, hey, look at me, look at me, look at me, look at me, look at me. Right? Cool. Now, in the back, off to the side, I got the workhorse. I got, I got uh, my, my high priority troops. I don't want them to die. I don't really want them to be noticed. So maybe, maybe, I will take and I will make them blue and purple. A little bit of blue, a little bit of purple in there. Maybe for some elements, you know, add a couple touches of red. Right? Now, it's human nature for the eye to move to the greatest point of contrast. So if we are just talking about, um, Clean up my board a bit. If we're just talking about these two colors here and here, your eye's gonna go here before it goes here. And, and in actuality, it's probably going down here where this red and green is too. Those are the points of highest contrast. So you can actually use this, this paint scheme um, and these color relationships to help yourself out and, you know, create a visually striking and interesting looking uh, set of figs. So anyway, um, that's our basic tutorial on color theory and color relationships. Um, I may see you in a later video to talk about color mixing and possibly mixing flesh tones. Those are kind of on the horizon there. Um, so yeah, that's it for me. Um, I'm George Sabo. This has been uh, Nat20Gaming. Have fun and I'll catch you next time.